Coming to you live from the Business Radio X studio, it's Franchise Marketing Radio. Brought to you by IDS, an award-winning digital marketing agency that delivers integrated marketing solutions for franchisers, franchisees, and franchise development teams. Learn why over 75 brands depend on IDS's team of dedicated marketers and client service professionals to deliver a strong ROI on their marketing investment. Go to IDSFranchiseMarketing.com for a complimentary digital audit and consultation. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio. I'm your host, Rob Ganley. And as always, it's great having another guest on the program with me. I have Nicole Reinhardt. She is a franchise owner, a multi-unit franchise owner in two different states, Colorado and Florida. For Property Management Inc. franchise. It's great to have you on the show today, Nicole. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. So tell us a little bit about that. I know, it, you know, uh, being with a franchise background like myself, I know getting to a multi unit franchise situation isn't easy, right? And I also know you have a pretty long career background. And so tell me a little bit about how you got started and, and how you see your future going. Yeah. So so the way I got started was kind of off a completely different path. I was a registered nurse for 20 years, um, been a nurse for since I was 18 years old. And that's really kind of all I knew and decided that healthcare just wasn't what I wanted to do anymore after about 18 years. I just decided that it just wasn't going in the direction I, wa- I had had planned and it wasn't a career I wanted to continue. And so but I had no idea what to do. And um, I kind of talked to the, you know, the wise one in my life, which was my father. And, and we sat down and had a brainstorm and he said, well, why don't you do some property management? And, and um, I said, well, I don't know anything about it. And he goes, well, aren't you a landlord? Don't you own properties? And I'm like, well, yeah, I own one. I'm not an expert. And I don't know if I would know how to manage other people's property. And so I kind of, you know, sat on that for a while and I teamed up with a business, a franchise coach, really, and they did, you know, the the long interview with me and had me answer all those questions. And and wouldn't you know it, every franchise that uh, would come up had a medical background, medical sales, medical device sales, uh, home home care. And I, you know, I started interviewing with them, and I it just wasn't in my heart, it wasn't my passion. And I was like, we've got to do something different. And she's like, well have you ever thought about doing property management? I'm like, you know what? You're the second person who said that to me. So maybe it's in my cards. So I said, well, I'll have them conversation because I have this great management company who's really just getting their roots going that you would probably enjoy being a part of. And so I um, started with their sales individual, which is an ironic story, which I'll kind of get back to that in a minute. But I started talking to their sales rep at the time and Jeremiah. And um, we developed this relationship. I felt like he understood where I was going in life and what did I want, what I wanted to do and succeed. And then he's like, you know, I think you would be a great candidate. I'm going to have our, uh, our CEO, the founder of PMI, give you a call. And I remember very distinctly, I was driving around, this was over a course of probably about two or three weeks, but I was, I had transitioned into home care because I wanted to be closer to my kids. I had small children at the time. I had a a three-year-old, a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old boys. And um, I remember what I was doing. I was doing some home care and I had stopped to pick up something at the pharmacy and I was sitting in the parking lot and I got a phone call from Steve Hart and the man just kind of pulled at my heartstrings and just touched me with his story and his passion for his vision of what a franchise with property management should look like. You know, Mm -hmm. he wasn't, he didn't want to be a slumlord. He didn't want to, you know, grow, grow out his infrastructure. He just wanted to get some really good people with some great ideas and some great visions in his brand. And I just could connect to him. And we sat and talked just about life for, oh gosh, it would just seem like forever. I just, the conversation just continued and continued. 
Now, granted, I was franchise number like 54, and they're above 450 right now. So this was this was a good almost 10 years ago. Um, but still to this day, that man has the same vision, the same uh, goals. He still speaks from the heart. And it's just somebody, even though we don't work for him, he's not like our boss. I just feel like every day I wake up and I've got to go execute Steve's vision. You know, it just, he just kind of pulled at your heartstrings. And so when, when I, with I, when I said I was working with my franchise or the business development coach, his name is Jeremiah. Jeremiah actually um, is now the VP of property management incorporated. And so he went from a sales side being his own person integrated into the company that he was selling because he was so passionate about it and Steve's vision to um, actually working as a VP in the franchise. And so, you know, I, I started from zero. I started from nothing. I was, uh, I was nothing special. I just, you know, decided that I woke up and said, I want to be my own boss. And I think property management's it. And I felt passionate about the brand and just started going, hitting the pavement. Um, I, like I said, did nothing special to grow my business. Yeah. Um, sole proprietor That's... really just worked myself was, you know, worked at it myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, look, your story is, it's great to hear it. I, I never get tired of the, of that story. It's, but it's a similar pattern because a lot of people are in, out there in another career and, at some point, think to themselves, I think I want to do something different, or maybe it's I really want to work for myself. Mm -hmm. For me, it was, you know, I absolutely, I, I wish I had discovered sooner uh, that I probably should have started right out of right out of the gate working for myself. But you know, you learn and uh, but you know, some people are wired that way. And franchising is such a great uh, bridge to, to being able to do that, right? It, yep. it really I was sharing something earlier about the, the validation of when you're, when you're doing, uh, when you're starting a business, it can be very scary. And when you're doing it around others that have done it successfully and done it and can do it and, 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 and you know, uh, be an example of success for you. That's one of the biggest uh, advantages of, of starting a franchise. Cause at some point we hit that wall where if there's not people around us to reassure us, it's hard. So uh, no, no doubt it's a big part of why you were able to be successful, but but also it has a lot to do with you, right? And you, you wound up uh, being in more than one market. So tell me a little bit about being in two markets. So you were in Colorado to start, I believe, and then uh, now you're expanding in Florida. Tell me a little bit about the differences there. How do you how do you kind of compare the two in terms of you know, launching the franchise, but, you know, marketing it and, you know, how are the markets different, I guess? Is there a challenge with that? And, and how have you overcome that? Yeah. So, um, my, my primary market was Colorado and the Colorado Springs area and did residential as well as association management there, um, in El Paso County. And, and, um, Within the, you know, another reason why uh, I feel um, strongly about a franchise is because just like what you said, Rob, it was, you know, you're a sole proprietor and you're an owner operator and it, it's lonely. It's, it's a lonely position to be in. However, that franchise brings the camaraderie and the family and those people that are dealing with the same system softwares, you know, challenges that you are and they're owner operators too. And you can rely on them and confide in them. They become your family, Rob. They really do. They just become part of your family. And, you know, six of my best friends to this day are PMI franchises. And so um, I had been going to Florida, visiting um, a friend of mine who had a franchise in Lakeland. And I was going back and forth visiting with her and and she's like, you know, you just need to move out here. And I was like, how am I supposed to do that? You know, my job is back in Colorado. And she's like, well, just buy a franchise here. And I was like, well, okay. And just kind of blew it off. And then um, one of the franchisees, unfortunately, had to um, sell his franchise in Tampa. And he called me up and said, hey, Nicole, I understand you're spending a lot of time in Florida. 
do you want to buy my franchise? And I'm like, oh my God, yes, I want your franchise. And so that's kind of how we got into Florida. It was already established, but another thing about being in a franchise, it's a refer, it's a, if it's its own internal referral, you know, base to grow in multi markets. And so that's really how we started in to get to the, to the Florida area. And then from there, we um, uh, expanded over into Panama City, Florida, which is the panhandle. And I chose that area because I have family there. And I really liked, I was choosing areas where I actually had family, friends, where I actually liked to be um, because it made the, the visits, the, you know, the, the, the marketing strategy a little bit easier because I knew something about the market. And then to to kind of elaborate on that multi market um, concept is the 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 six of us the six friends the six best friends who have franchises in Kansas City two in Indianapolis one in Lakeland one in Virginia we all got together and bought another franchise as a partnership down in Fort Myers. This is the power of a, the brand and a franchise where you can find these relationships and develop these relationships then to go off and do something bigger and better um, with a group of people that have the same philosophy and the same kind of, uh, you know, mindset as you do. And so that's kind of how I developed and how my, you know, progression into the multi-market happened. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. And that is an interesting thing. It's one thing to say, well, it's great to, to, to be a part of a, a, of a franchise and it really, greatly increases your odds of success. And and sure, it's great to have a, a local business here in Colorado, right? But to think even broader like you are and have those opportunities, yeah, that's another another level that you probably weren't even thinking about when you got started. Uh, no. but it's, what, what an amazing blessing it is now, right? Yep. Um, but, but, but clearly these different markets, it's funny, you said, well, you know, you kind of knew the market and it helped. Um, but but what are those unique? Like, how do you adapt marketing, or do you have to? Is it is a very similar approach uh, in each market for for PMI, or is it? Or is there some adaptation that you have learned, or I you know any ideas uh, that that you or things uh, lessons learned, I guess, in, right. in doing different markets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the 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 way that Colorado and Florida are set up are extreme opposites when it comes to landlord tenant, um, you know, laws and responsibilities, and even, even how, you know, the legislator views each one of those completely different. We're talking, you know, California, Colorado, California, right? And so right. Um, completely different uh, way of thinking. And so the, the markets are different when it comes even to residential. Um, Florida is very, is is somewhat balanced when it comes to landlord tenant and Colorado is, you know, is, is more heavily tenant. Um, and then you have the associations that we manage and, you know, Florida, you have, you have snow and and heat issues and in Florida or sorry in Colorado you have snow and heat issues in Florida you have you know hurricanes and and uh you know salt water breaking down everything and and you don't have snow and so um and you have you know nine story condos on the beach and so it's a completely different mindset and so you have to adapt and you have to know your local and state rules, licensure. You don't have to be licensed in um, Colorado to manage associations. You definitely have to be licensed in Florida. And so when you do go to in these markets to do that due diligence, and honestly, one of the things that the franchise brought to me was those different um, requirements because there's other franchisees already in those markets that were like, okay, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. Hey, you know, wh where's the best place to start marketing? You know, go to your, you know, local chamber of commerce, you know, just some of these things that to integrate yourself into the markets was very helpful brainstorming with other franchisees. But that's kind of how we kind of how we started was to go yeah. meet with the chamber of commerce, being a member of that chamber, um, integrating into their vendors and, and whatnot, and really getting to know kind of uh, that mix of people, because those are business minded people that you want to start with. And so that's kind of how we, we kind of step foot into a market. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. And how, how much does like the digital marketing side play in the things? How much do you guys, I mean, obviously I'm sure reviews play into it and different things, but tell me a little bit about that. How, how do you do yeah, that? Yeah. Well, you know, being a property manager, you're always, you know, the, the bad person when it comes to, when it comes to reviews, you know, and then you get those people who know people who know people and people and they, they give you one star reviews. And so, you know, you have to, you have to just, you know, just answer them back and and play that game. However, um, digital marketing does, it definitely plays a role in um, anything we do now. Um, I have owners in my single family properties that I've never met. You know, they've been deployed overseas for years. They call you up and say, hey, I have a house. My tenants are getting ready to move out and I've been self-managing and I don't want to do it anymore. And so, you know, having that digital marketing presence helps them find you um, when it comes to your, uh, you know, what you offer. And so putting all of that information and having a very robust digital marketing footprint really does help catapult. And that, you know, again, franchise brings that, brings the power of the brand and brings the power in numbers to be able to come up with a clean, crisp, you know, footprint that is that is SEO'd all over the world. And again, that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's above my pay grade. But, um, you know, I, I just go, okay. And it makes it happen because it's the, you know, it's not me doing it as Mr., you know, little Mr., you know, one man show that can barely understands what SEO is. So, um, yeah, so that it, it's very important to have that digital mm-hmm. footprint in our, in this industry. Yeah. yeah, 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 no doubt. So I know, um, you know, obviously your journey here has been really, really a good one. And it's interesting some of the relationships that you've that you've created and and, and both on a personal and a business level. Um, and I know that you've become a mentor. Uh, I don't know how recent, I think in the in the last few years. And uh, but tell me a little bit about that. And also, if you have any advice for anyone that might be thinking either about business ownership in in the franchise world, or even specifically about your industry. But first, with the mentoring, tell us a little bit about that. And then any advice you have for folks that yeah. are where you were so, in 2014. <laughs> yeah. So as um, Property Management Incorporated was growing, we... Um, the, the corporate office, and I was always been in very ingrained in the corporate office, but um, we decided, or, you know, as we were talking, um, we realized that we just need local individuals, boots on the ground that knows the different rules, regs, legislative issues that are coming down, be able to help with contracting and whatnot, the local level, because every state's different. Every municipality, you know, different municipalities are different as well. Um and so they they said, you know, there's key markets that we think we have some um, rock stars in, if you will, and let's start there. And so I was approached, I think I was um, the fourth regional mentor chosen. And actually, I was the only region, I am the only regional mentor currently that actually started at zero within the franchise. So I'm the grown baby, is what they call me. I'm the franchise grown baby, where the other franchises were actually acquisitions who actually had property management companies and then, then joined the franchise. And so, um, so I'm one of five, one of six um, regional mentors, and I have the whole state of of uh, Colorado. And there, I think there's 24 of us in Colorado mm-hmm. now. So we're one of the bigger states when it comes to property management incorporated locations. Mm-hmm. And our job is to really, you know, our, the goal is to help these franchises overcome those startup issues, the failure to launch issues mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. being that, you know, eyes and ears that can go out and have lunch and dinner and help them through some, you know, contracting issues. Hey, what, what is your PMA, you know, property management agreement say, Hey, what does your lease say? Am I going to be breaking any laws, blah, 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 blah. And just helping them establish that pick me up, get out the door, go meet people and kind of be their cheerleader at the same time. I just had um, a franchisee call me and say, Nicole, I'm just drowning. I just need you to help me. So my franchise was able to kind of step in and help another franchise get back on their feet to be successful. Um, We truly do believe, you know, if one franchise is, is, 
is stumbling, the rest of us really need to jump in and help that family member. And and so um, we've been able to do that. And I think being that mentor and having that mentor role, as I reached out to um, the folks in Colorado, it, it makes them turn and, you know, be able to feel comfortable with asking questions and not have to go to corporate because they don't want to go to corporate because they don't want to feel like they're failing. And so they mm. just reach out to, you know, someone with, you know, just a, you know, a, you know, a smile and a hug and say, I just, I need to talk to you about my woes and just having mm. you listen to them so that they're not fearful that the big corporate monster is going to come in. So it's been very helpful it has shown the, the the mentors program has definitely shown in the markets where the mentors are um, more um, engagement into the franchise when you have that mentor in the market. Yeah. yeah. And so I, that was a great answer. And I wanted you to follow up because that answer is a great answer for the next follow up, which was, you know, any advice to someone that's thinking about, starting a franchise or specifically in your industry. And I think part of the answer is, well, look at that, right? I mean, that's an amazing support system. Mm -hmm. And then that's why, you know, look, fr franchising is all about expanding a brand and it's everybody's together, right? Our success is your success. And if you fail, we fail. And, and that's the beauty of the industry to tell you the truth. And that's why I love it. And I love talking to people like you, but, but for those on the outside, Tell, tell us a little bit about from someone because you try to go back to 2014, right? You're thinking, can I even do this, right? But tell tell us a little bit about now that you're on the other side. Any advice or any uh, yeah. any guidance there? Yeah. yeah. So you know, my father was kind of my mentor. He has his own business, you know, multi million dollar business, and you know, he's he's my biggest cheerleader at the same time, my biggest critic, and. He, you know, when I was starting to do this landlord conversation with him, you know, he even said, well, why do you need a franchise? I mean, what, what are you getting out of that? You can do this yourself. And I'm thinking to him going, I don't even know where to start, dad. I don't even know how to even get started. I just know I have a thought, but I don't know how to expand that thought. And so like when I said I was when I started talking to Jeremiah and Steve at the at the PMI uh, corporate office, they were telling me, you know, we're going to give you a we're going to give you the software to do it. We're going to do we're going to give you the tools to to um, do this job, and we're going to do it turnkey. And I thought mm -hmm. that's awesome because I don't have the time if I'm going to leave my six figure salary in 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 healthcare. I'm thinking of Christmas and birthdays and my my 13 year old who's traveling with his baseball team and it's sucking me dry and my four year and my three year old and I'm just going I this is not gonna this is not gonna work if I have to sit behind a computer for the next six months and try to develop these systems that I just don't I don't even know where to start and so this turnkey kind of operation just seemed very appropriate and and. There are people, and and I applaud them. There are very many. There are several people that have started their company and have worked their way up and never needed a franchise. That wasn't me. I needed the camaraderie. I needed the family the environment. I worked better in a team, and so the franchise worked very well for me and what I needed. And so. Um, again, I applaud those people who've sat behind a computer and come up with their own softwares and systems and do it and are very successful because they're 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 out there. However, for me and my personality, the family and the franchise was the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's the key. And and again, what I would say to anyone out there that's thinking about a business is, you know, it, it, that's the key. That, that's what drives the success rate of franchise businesses versus uh, independent businesses. And yeah. it's the yeah. things you don't think about. And you're assuming a lot of people that are are entrepreneurial, the Steve Hart's of the world, your dad, uh, they are unique people. And, um, you know, not everybody's wired that way. And it's okay not to be. And it's okay to recognize. In fact, it's better to recognize that yep. when you're considering it, right? That's why franchising is such a great opportunity uh, for so many. So that's great. That's great to hear. I, I really have enjoyed the conversation. And, and I want to make sure that before we wrap up, that I just ask someone who's, who's now been a mentor, been through the process of starting a business coming from something like the healthcare field that's very structured and you know you do your job every day but it's like you're not creating things or running a business so it's very different 
But, you know, as a mentor, is there one thing, is there something that has inspired you? Anything you want to leave with the audience that you just think it, it really has helped you through your, your life? You know, I think the one thing that I have told many uh, new franchisees that come, you know, that call me, I, I get calls from all over the country. Um, and the one thing, you know, I tell them is don't overthink it. Don't mm -hmm. spend hours trying to think through scenarios because it's not going to be the scenario that you're going to encounter. Just have a vision, go do it. Just make it happen and learn along the way. Um, you know, don't ponder something for too long. Just, you know, don't be a failure to launch because you're so in the weeds of trying to think of the best way to do it. You know, no one started and it was a seamless and smooth, you know, startup. Startups are, you know, they're they're rough, rough and rocky. Just, you know, strap on your strap on your shoes and go and go do it. And don't sit yeah. behind the computer screen. Just go do it and learn, learn along the way. Yeah, fantastic advice. And I think about, you know, a lot of us are conditioned to, to think like we, we grew up in school with an A to F scale and no one wants to fail. And But the thing about a business is you, you should get comfortable with it. And failure isn't really failure. It's just process of learning and moving forward. And yeah, if yep. you overthink avoiding failure, you tend not to succeed. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's very true. I've had I've had my share of failures that I've learned from and and I still learn from them this day and I still make mistakes and and learn from those failures and say, you know what, I should probably do that differently next time, you know, and 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 it's just, you know, failure's not failure. It's uh it's a different way to look at things and and how to grow. It's a growing opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and before we let the audience go, is there a, a website you'd want to share? I know you're you're local in Colorado, Florida and things like that. But is there a, a main website you'd want to share with the audience in case they're interested in maybe doing what you do or or even in your services locally there? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I would say just go to the Property Management Inc. Um, main website. You will, you know, find all of the franchises that are in the um, the family of PMI, and obviously, you know our local or our franchises in Tampa, Panama City, um, Colorado Springs. Uh, please visit those if you have any questions. Even if you're like Nicole, I just want to talk to you one on one, just because I don't. I, I may be trying to get into you know some other type of of, of uh, idea and franchising, but I just need to know someone was in the boots and in the in the weeds that I was. Just give me a call. I'd be more than happy to talk to people. I love talking to people about you know entrepreneurial type stuff because it's just one. You just sometimes need just a pat on the back to go go do it. Go. Yeah. Go out yeah. there and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got the no idea, doubt. so you go do it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, and it's it's yeah. true. We're we're a select bunch too. You need to yeah. you need to get around us. We'll we'll help yeah. you. Exactly. So reach out to Nicole. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it's great. It's great to have you, and I hope to have you back again soon. Absolutely. And bye for now. Okay. You Thank Nicole. you, Rob. Thank you. Bye. 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 